Blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Coming down from the throne of dead you live to give me the victory oh blessing glory and honor power and might and dominion be unto thee my blessed lord blessing glory and honor power and might and dominion be unto thee my blessed lord Rising from the dead you live to give me the victory. Well, blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion be unto thee, my blessed Lord. cross for me, rising from the dead you live to give me the victory, well, blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion, be unto thee, my blessed Lord, blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion, be unto thee. Lord, coming down from the throne on high, you died on the cross for me, rising from the dead you live to give me the victory, oh, blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion, be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion, be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Coming down from your throne on high, you died on the cross for me. Rising from the dead, you live to give me the victory. Blessing, glory, and honor, is power and might and dominion be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Coming down from your throne on high, he died on the cross for me. Rising from the dead you live to give me the victory, oh, blessing, glory, and honor, power and might and dominion, be unto thee, my blessed Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes, Father, Lord. we bless you today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All Thank glory you, Jesus. and honor Hallelujah. belongs to you, Father. I praise we your thank holy you, Lord. Name. We you praise so you, Lord. Lord. Lord, help glory, us to be led glory, by your spirit in the service Lord. today. Lord. Lord, may we be moved by your spirit yes, only Lord. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Good to see everybody today. Good to see little Charlie. Wow. He's a growing. Yeah. I tell you, there's a miracle right there. He's prayed a lot of prayers for that baby. So, so thankful. Hallelujah. Hey, I must say that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives in me. I came from God. I am not my own. Christ in 
my body and in my spirit, cause I am God's. Hey, I must say that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives in me. I came from song yesterday I thought of Tina this has been her favorite song for a long time but she's going in for surgery tomorrow right tomorrow she's had a lot of worrying and fear and anxiety which that's common for the flesh but I told her I said God is in control of all of this Amen. I want some of you ladies to come and stand around her and I just want us to impart her love and strength and peace that she'll have during this surgery thank you Father Lord we just lift Tina to you right now we're so grateful Lord, that you're in her life that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost you brought her through miracle after miracle you said you wouldn't leave us where we're at, but you would lift us up. You would be our strength. You would be our peace. And I thank you, Lord, because you give her strength and peace that came through the death on, on the cross. You took every stripe. You took every beating that you could take in her behalf. Lord, you knew that this day would come. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you know the end from the beginning. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that there will be no worry, no unsettlement in her spirit, oh God. But she'll have peace as she goes in tomorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name.
ultimate sacrifice for us. Hallelujah. If you would have been the only person on this earth, he would have done it just for you. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This next song, little chorus, we haven't really sang it a lot around here, but it comes from Galatians, the third chapter and verse 10. It said, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus took everything on his back on the cross took it upon himself everything that we would ever need to live in this daily life there's nothing we have to do but worship and love him hallelujah hallelujah I know that I know that I know
I want to be faithful to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The boy, they all prayed for you. I, I, heard, I heard the Lord say to me, trust in me. Trust in me. And I know you can because I had to trust in him. Back in 2004, I had an exploratory surgery. They didn't know what was wrong with me. But the doctor, a lot of doctors looked at me and they had sent me home once. And a couple of days later, I had to go back in. The pain was more than I could bear. But the Lord told me while I was laying in bed after the surgery, he said, I had you in the palm of my hand. I heard him speak that to me. And Hallelujah. I know that you can trust in him. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
how you minister to us Thank individually. You, Jesus. It's your love and your grace, your mercy Hallelujah. that does that. Hallelujah. We're just a conduit for you to work Thank through. Thank you, Lord. Thank We're you, nothing Lord. special. We're nothing better than the guy under the bridge. But God, we just thank you that we have opened up to you to use us in different ways. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hannah, would you introduce your people? Stand and tell us who they are. Brotherhood. Yeah. Kenneth, that's right. I think Kenneth's worked on my trucks before. <laughs> <laughs> it takes everybody to keep me going. So, <laughs> And Katie did. I call her Katie. Did. Kay, introduce. I, I know him, but I want you to stand and introduce him. <laughs> Ch Charlie, come early. Amen. Tell us, tell the people that don't know about Charlie. Charlie was born at 26 weeks. He weighed two pounds and one ounce whenever he was born. He was in the hospital for 77 days. And now he weighs a little over 11 pounds. All right, yay. And Tuesday he'll be six months old. So that was really for Bill and Marie. I've really been missing them here lately. They're hallway in Phoenix. <laughs> but he listens to the service. Amen. Praise God. Good to see you, Susan and Levi back. Praise God. And good to always see uh, Terry. And Blake. And Blake. That's right. <laughs> I'll get them all right in a minute. Amen. Praise God. Anybody got a good testimony to share? You want to share the goodness of God? Anybody? Y'all breathing, right? The Bible said, let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. Good to see Dwayne and Tina. Amen. amen. Dwayne's been driving to Pennsylvania and back all the time. and I wonder how he even gets enough sleep to do it. <coughs> and Terry's back. Good to see Terry. Amen. And, and her sister. Significant other, <laughs> I miss him when he's not here. Amen. I told him, I said, You missed the service last week. We had all music, <coughs> and I needed that bass really Amen. bad. <laughs> God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Anybody got a prayer request that you want us to pray for? Okay, Merle, get another mic, please. Merle. Her little voices don't carry very well. I just like you to pray for Dave. He had a nose that was bleeding again. It was bleeding all day Friday. And uh, it's just been tough, tough for me. Yes. Went to the ER this week because he couldn't stop his nose bleed. So now it's bleeding again, right? Yes. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Jesus. Thank you. We just sang a song, Lord, that was right out of the scriptures. We've cur we were redeemed from the curse of the law. And I thank you, Father, that right now, right where Dave is sitting or laying down, we speak life and peace and healing into his body. Thank you, Lord. You care for him. We do too, but Lord, you care even more because you gave his life for him. We miss him when he's not here. We want to see him heal from that nosebleed. But most of all, he needs platelets. Platelets is what we have in our bodies to keep our, our from bleeding to death. And I thank you, Father. His bone marrow can start creating platelets. And you know how to make that happen. In Jesus' name. Oh, they that wait upon
doesn't mean be patient. Stand on the street corner and twiddle your thumbs. Teach me, Lord, to, to wait. It's the same word as waiter or waitress. You know, a good waitress will keep your coffee pot, coffee cup filled, they'll keep your water glass filled, your tea glass filled. They'll come by every little bit, see if you need anything. That's that's the word wait in that scripture. That's, that's come from Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah said, They that wait, minister to the Lord. He'll renew your strength. And we're believing that for Dave. Amen. God's going to renew his strength. Inner person. Amen. All, all that needs to be done. Sometimes we don't even know how to pray. That's really why we pray in the Holy Ghost. That's right. The Bible says you're praying mysteries. And you're building up your most holy faith when you pray. Amen. Sophia, good to see you, sis. Amen. We've been missing you. We like to see you dancing back there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just minister to you, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Father. You Give us the agenda Jesus. for the service, Lord. We don't have a bulletin to go by. We just try to follow your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Mike, one time I was searching for some answers and praying and worshiping God. And I I, I got to a place to where I it was like you said, I didn't know how to pray. And I I just got I got all bum puzzled you know I tried praying in the spirit and, and I didn't feel like that would satisfied me and uh, I got real still before God and I was actually I was driving the car and I was real quiet there and the Lord told me he said just worship me he said just praise me the work's already done Sometimes when we get to a point like that, that he don't need our interference. He don't even need our prayers. The work's already done. We just need to praise him and worship him for it. I used to do a little deer hunting when I was a teenager. I hated it. But all my buddies deer hunted, so I'd look like a fool if I didn't go. I never did like sitting out there at 4 o'clock in the morning, cold and listen <laughs> never probably ever saw it there but this time we had two little ponds that's pretty close together and this we heard the dogs they were chasing us deer the dogs was, i could faintly hear them and but i saw this deer it come a little deer a little doe come down to this pond and he was drinking and i could see his belly he just was <laughs> <laughs> he'd been running so hard This song says, As the deer panteth o'er the water, so my soul longeth after thee.
Seven, but I have a praise report. <laughs> um, so I had surgery two weeks ago, and they told me going into surgery that it could be six months up to a year before I would have my voice. I have my voice, not 100%. But um, let me just tell you all, there is so much power in prayer. Yes. I had all of you guys. I had a best friend praying for me for six months prior till I came out and said that I had to have this surgery without my best friend and you all and the power of prayer. Um, I wouldn't be here two weeks after having massive surgery where they removed a nine centimeter mass out of my neck and my sinuses scraped and my turbans all done. So guys, when you're down and out, Tina, this is especially for you too. And they all the odds are against you. Don't worry about it because God's already got it. And that was one thing that I struggled with when I was going to my best friend and asking and be like, come on, I can't do this. And my best friend was like, it's already taken. You, it's already in God's hands. So just remember that even though we want to doubt it, I shouldn't be talking today. According to the, to the doctors, I am. It's not the way I would like, but I am. So guys, just always pray. Yes, amen. Oh, power in prayer.
doctors, they all try, but they say hope is in vain. Oh, but wait, there's someone praying, and in the midst of that clue, all at once, that great physician, he steps into the room. Oh, there's power in prayer. Oh, there's power. see a lot of things and you can read people's thoughts sometimes and Barb I just want to say you just keep pulling just as hard as you've pulled this far in the service and what your heart is hungering for you're going to get a dose of it Praise God. and you're not the only one but we can see that easily sometimes from up here people are just pulling they haven't gotten what they want yet but they're still pulling and don't say, well, let's get on with the service. Let's just get on with serving them, Hallelujah. encouraging them yes. Amen. to Hallelujah. receive what God has for them yes. this morning. And some of you are really good at hiding it, especially that little blonde girl right there. But God knows what she's gone through with the loss of her mother, knows what she's going through right this moment. Merle, God can see you clearly. Yes. Clearly. Therefore, he knows exactly the steps he's got ahead for you, waiting for you. And I can't imagine what he's going to do, but I know what your heart wants. Your heart wants your husband to be well. Yes. Your heart wants to see him ministering through the Holy Spirit, words coming out of his mouth that touched the congregation because you've seen it before. Yes. And you want to see it again. Hallelujah. Yes. And it might even strengthen your voice, too, <laughs> to see God move through him like that. Yes. Hallelujah. So let's all be prepared to pull for those around us. If you can see it in their eyes, Hallelujah. pull for them. You know what I mean by pull? Just do it. And God will come in and saturate this place. When you thought it was almost time to preach, whoa, he come in and saturate this place. And everyone who's hungry will receive what they want. The girl behind Merle, she's pulling as hard as she knows how to pull today. God made her need right where she is, Lord. Right where she is. Yes, I thought it, I thought it was her sister. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Thank you, Lord. let's don't forget this little fella right here. He's quiet a lot of the time, but.
but his mind is just going, 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 going. Can I, can I insert that here, or should I wait? Do I really have something to say, or do I just want to be a part, or do I just want to feel the Holy Spirit moving through me as I speak? I'll say to you, don't hold back so much. Don't let that, don't let that thing be a crutch. Let your heart be that which guides you. Somebody here is aching to hear words from somebody that's just for them. Do your best to stay in tune. Do your best to stay in tune. But don't just stand there, Jamie. Let it out. I love you, and I love your spirit. So don't be selfish. Share with us. Forget the time Carla hollered at you. It don't mean anything now. <laughs> Just worship the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Brother Mike, you do whatever the Holy Spirit's telling you to do. Thank you, Jesus. Here comes the one. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. See, a service is all about ministry. It ain't three songs and a sermon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As you all know, their son, Brad, has had a lot of issues. And Linda says they're trying to diagnose him with even more things now. God's brought him this far. He's not going to drop him in the midst of it. I want you to stretch your head this way as we pray for Brad. Father, we just agree right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, as Linda stands here, as a mother stands in place of her son, we come against anything that would try to tear down this faith in her and Terry, Brad, Tina, Jared, any of them. We thank you, Father God, that you've got all of this. We thank you that through all this, you're going to bring him out with a high hand. I thank you, Lord, that he will declare the glories of the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you did it over 2,000 years ago. It's nothing new for you, but you are all powerful. You're mighty. In our midst, oh God, and we just declare him healed by the stripes of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Father, now we take time to worship you. We thank you, Lord. We worship you because you are our God. You're the only one that died and came back from the grave. And I thank you, Lord, you did it just for Brad. You did it for every one of these people here this morning, God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God, we thank you, Lord. We take time, Lord, to just worship you. It's not about a song. It's not about a scripture. But worshiping you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, you brought us this far. You'll continue our journey. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. I bless your name, oh, God. I bless your name. Yes. 
see you. I see a shepherd's hook being put in your hand, and I see you out searching for lost sheep. You're being called. You're being called as a shepherd. Do you know what that is? <laughs> Mike's our shepherd. <laughs> he shepherds us around, right? He leads us to green pastures, and he leads us to quiet waters. That's what shepherds do. They watch out for their flock. Now, are you ready to do that? Right this minute? No. But you've been called. And God's gifts and callings are without repentance. So with that in mind, your ministry begins. Thank you, Learn and grow. Amen. Pattern yourself Thank you, after somebody that you know follows the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Watch him. See how he treats pe God's people. Yes. And you'll have a good example Thank of you, what God wants from each and every Thank one of us. God. He wants us all to serve him, and he wants us all to shepherd you know, if we see a lost sheep, yeah, we're going to go get it and bring it back. Amen. But your heart is in that. Yes. Your heart is going after them lost sheep and making sure they come back. And watching the whole flock, leading them into the shepherd's pen. You read and you learn about shepherds. Thank you, Father. Right? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Gina, the, the Lord said to me that um, this is just the beginning this is an opportunity with what you're getting ready to go through that that um, uh, when when 
God sees us through something and ex exceeds our expectations, we need to worship him and thank him and praise him. And But through your brother, his needs, the Lord knows them. But I hear the Lord say that he's going to bring you through higher than your expectations and that you could be a great encourager to your brother through this. And... <laughs> It, I believe that it'll bless him and bring healing to his body. Thank you, Father. Yes. Amen. Praise and Jamie, God. I heard the Lord say to me that don't be bashful. He knows your heart and your compassion for people. But he gave us two ears for hearing and only one mouth to speak so that we will listen to him twice as much. That just listen and wait upon the Lord, and He'll give you the words to say to be able to share the Lord. I know how it was for me a scary thing and stepping out, and you know, and I wanted to see these things move and work in our midst. And you know, and I said, Lord, please send somebody. And then He spoke to me and He said, I've got you, I've got you. Well, he has you too. Amen. And I want to encourage that in you. Yes. Thank you. Let Lord. it flow from you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a different service. Amen. This is for you that don't understand. This is uh, what you call body ministry. Everybody that feels an unction to function, <laughs> I guess we can call it that, can speak. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Oh, Father, give us our next step, Lord, to take in this service. We don't want to go past. We don't follow too short. We want to flow with you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's so important to follow the Holy Spirit. That's People just read that in the Bible and go on, but you've got to put it in everyday shoe leather where it works in life. Thank you, Lord. One more time. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all Let us pray. 
standing in his presence Linda didn't say anything about this but uh, she was extremely sick this morning most people wouldn't even come to church but she sat at the kitchen table and she started almost screaming out scriptures and praying so you feeling better babe <laughs> Oh yes, there's angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing. Oh. 
worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the moving of your spirit. Yes, Lord. Oh, we glorify you, God. Hallelujah. Sister Kay, I want to thank you for something special. You just kept asking for prayer for Charlie. That's just a little child. They're not part of my family. Uh, let's get on. No, she just kept on requesting prayer for Charlie. Every one of you has a little part that's way more powerful than you think it is. Yes. Amen. Amen. Try to remember it and use it throughout this week. You know, we just sang that song. There's my angels all around. I just, the Lord quickened this to me. It says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? He didn't say that to angels. That's what it said. Mm -hmm. Here's what he told angels. They're ministering spirits. Yes. Verse 14, Sit forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So I just speak to our angels. Lord, I just, I send them forth. I send the ministering spirits to Gary this morning. You know what he needs? You know what he needs in his family? I just send ministering spirits, Lord, to minister grace and mercy. Things that I don't know even to bring up. You know what they need. You know what the family needs. We thank you, Father. We speak to those angels that they're waiting to be dispatched. They're, the Bible says they're ministering spirits sent forth. So we're sending them today. Yes, amen. amen. Hallelujah. We send them to Hannah's mom. What's your name? Melissa? Michelle. I'll get it right. We send ministering spirits to Michelle's family. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. People we don't even know. Thank People you, it's involved you're involved with. We just send those ministering spirits to minister to that minister to that family. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask you to send ministering spirits to Sophia. Just buried her mother. Sixteen year old girl without a mama. But, Lord, you raised up mamas around her that will speak into her life. Yes. They'll speak good things and teaching things how to be successful in life. You'll raise up those. Thank you, Lord. Ministering spirits will get them up. Amen. We speak into Jesse's life over here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All her family members she's involved in. May the ministering spirits just start healing things. Bringing the dots together. And where there was animosity and where there was hurt and where there was bitterness. Father, I thank you by the Spirit. We thank you that's going to be wiped away. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I send ministering spirits to Sarah. Been faithful to drive a long ways to church. Her and Bob's been a tremendous blessing in Linda and I's life, as well as many, many other people. And sometimes, even with her kids, she feels alone. We just send ministering spirits to comfort that. The hurtful parts. Heal it. In the name of Jesus. And help each one of us to receive. When you're bringing healing to us, Lord, help us to receive that. When you're connecting the dots together in our families... Help us to receive that. You know, sometimes we want to just stay hurt so we can get, so we can say things bad back. Yeah, let's just eradicate that out of our, our language and out of our spirit.
Amen. Amen. Lady. I can't see who. Sophia, okay. I don't know where you're pointing to. So. I don't know if this is a testimony or praise or I just, I really do feel like I'm, I'm here for a reason and everything that's happened is for a reason. Like I started coming to church a few weeks before I found out my mom was sick out of just nowhere. I just was like, I think I want some Jesus in my life and I started coming again <laughs> and I didn't think nothing of it. And <laughs> without without him, I would not be able to do any of this. And I truly feel that just through him, I'm closer with my mom. Good. And Good. <laughs> I had a lot in my head that was just, <laughs> it's going. <sighs> I just, I feel him in me. I put my mom's ashes on my heart and I feel her angel. My heart just beats harder and I just feel her with me. And I do feel like my mom couldn't be everything I wanted when she was here. Our, it was always just a mess, but now it's like she's amazing now and she's with me. I truly feel her every day. I look up and I see heart clouds all in the sky. <laughs> and it may just be in my mind, but I know she's there. And <laughs> it's easy to feel like, why is Jesus doing this to me? What did I do to deserve this? But his spirit in me is just so strong that it just pushes me closer to him. Amen. It wants me to be good for him. It wants me to live my life in faith for him just so I can be with him at the end of the day. Sure. Yeah. Because through him, I'm with my mom now, and it's just so crazy to me that this is what it took yeah. to get me there. But it's it's what yeah. I needed, and it's almost worth it sometimes because <laughs> it's just <laughs> That's good. It's a negative, but she's a lot happier, and I'm going to learn to be eventually, and I can't do that without Jesus. Amen. Good, good word. Just, you do an amazing job. <laughs> <laughs> good word. You know, sometimes it's, it takes courage to stand up. Sure. You know, when you're not used to doing that, it takes courage, and I appreciate that. And every time you do it, it's a little easier the next time. I, I appreciate her very much. I think this lady has grown so incredibly fast, and and uh, I'm just <laughs> I'm thrilled that she's in our presence and a part of our family. Yeah. And um, the to see her worship and praise the Lord and how she's grown and uh, and and even Sharon now, and and that just thrills me. Yes. Um, the Lord. Uh, I, I believed in angels for a long time, and um, while we, we were, uh, Mike was speaking about angels, I, I uh, heard the Lord, and Jacob, when in the Old Testament, he, uh, one night, he laid his head on a rock and, and uh, used it for a pillow for sleep, and the word tells us that Jesus is the rock we know he is the rock of our salvation yes, amen. and when he died on the cross he gave his spirit to comfort us well that rock is inside us and the angels are given charge over us to watch over us and to protect us from all manner of things all you have to do is believe and with that rock inside of you Jacob's that rock that he laid his head on the angels were ascending and ascending upon that rock that rock is in you they can yes. these angels can always constantly be ascending and be descending Amen. around us that's right the Bible says Jacob called that the gate of heaven the gate of heaven amen musicians thank you all I'd like to say something real quick here um I just want to brag on all you people, this congregation. We have new ones come in, and, you know, Mike asks, always asks a lot of questions. 
I'm not that type, but he is. But he always is asking different ones, well, what do you like about the church? And I want you to know that without fail, they always say the love from the people. That's a compliment, and I appreciate that. And I just want you to know that God loves all of us the same, whether we've been here a year or 10 years or 14 or whatever it's been. God loves us all the same. And we want everyone to feel a part and to move out. And when you come to service, the Lord's really been dealing with me. Don't come thinking what a need I have to be met, but come to meet someone else's need. That's my desire. And I just love you all and appreciate you so much. Can I say one Go more ahead. thing? One more. Go ahead. Oh. Go um, ahead. I, I, I just, I don't know if you all know, but I appreciate this. This lady, she was given us to lead us in worship and her strength that she has in her and when she's not feeling well, that she's a fighter, that she, she fights for what is ours, what God has given us. And I just, I appreciate her so very much and I'm so glad that she is our worship leader. Me too. <laughs> well, Mike, you know, I quit driving for Uber and I quit driving for Lyft. And I thought, but you know, those was my people. Those was who I talked to. You know, those was who I could minister to in whatever way. You Thank know, you, so I'm like, but I felt like I needed to get away from the people and start de delivering my packages. And so I switched to Amazon and I started delivering Amazon. Well, the other day, <laughs> I was over in Lee Summit. And I wasn't even going to tell the story because I felt like <laughs> that'd just be fracking, <laughs> you know. But I felt like that God was in this. And so I was over in Lee Summit, and I had ran up there, and I delivered a package to this porch. And I jumped back in my car and backed out and took off down the street. And I was driving down the street, and I seen a walker. Beside, beside the mailboxes. And then I seen this man and he was just laying on the ground and he had his phone and I went on past and I hit my brake and I pulled over and this car was behind me and he's like, you idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and I, and I throw my car in reverse. I started backing up and this, and I jumped out and I, took off running back to this man and this kid that had went flying around me came backing up and he come running up to this man and he says what's going on and I said I don't know so I said are you are you okay and he said oh I just took a tumble and I said well are you hurting anywhere and he said, no, not any worse than I always do. <laughs> and I said, well, okay. I said, can I do anything for you? And he said, well, you could maybe try to help me set up. Well, I'm pretty little and he was pretty big, <laughs> you know. And so I'm like, okay, you know. And so I, I got a hold of him and we, the little guy helped me and we set him up. And he, and I said, Sir, is there anybody that we could get a hold of or, or can we help you in any other way? And he said, well, he said, if you guys could just help me get stood up, I could get back to my home. And I thought, Lord, I don't have the strength to pick this man up, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I looked at that boy and I said, are, are, you, are you ready? <laughs> and he said, yeah. I'm ready. And I said, okay. And I said, Lord, I got to have your strength. And we just picked him up. And he just stood up. And, and his feet was kind of sideways. And so we got his feet straightened up for him. And the little guy did. And, and 
And the whole time I was holding him and he says, I'm falling, I'm falling. And I was standing behind him, pushing him. And I'm like, you're not going to fall. I'm like, we got you, <laughs> you know. And it's just like God had him, yeah. you know. And so and so he, he got a hold of his walker. And I said, do I need to help you to your home? And he said, no, no. He said, I, I can make it now, you know. And so I went and went back to my car and this little guy that stopped to help me, he says, I see him all the time. I just live up the road and I see him all the time. And I hadn't seen him for a few days, so I was kind of wondering about him. I said, well, there's your answer. <laughs> and, I said, but, and so I, d I moved my, uh, he was standing behind my car and, and I said, oh, am I in your way? And he said, yeah, <laughs> you know, so I moved my car and he trekked on over to his house, you know, so. I yep. just thank God. <laughs> Good. Right. It's all about people. Amen. It's all about people. Hallelujah. For all you guys, uh, October the 21st, that's two more Saturdays after this, uh, we have our men's fellowship breakfast back there at 8 o'clock. I encourage you to come. I had a guy planned on coming. He's a graduate of KU and a dynamic Christian and businessman and uh, called and said, I'm on my way to Nicaragua that day. So anyway, we're just going to have a fellowship. I don't know what we'll do, but we'll do something, pray for each other or whatever, share and pray and eat breakfast, okay? So keep that in mind. That would be at 8 o'clock, the third Saturday in October, okay? And then uh, today, soon as service over, we're going to go to the nursing home in Belton. We have a service up there where I don't preach. We just sing and share testimonies. And, and uh, Carla's our piano player today, so she's got some songs ready. We generally sing some old hymns that the people are used to and know. So if you will go and help us just sing, it makes it better. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is the first Sunday in o October. And some of you noticed our little house out there. We call that our blessing box. It used to be uptown where people can come and get food out of that when they are less fortunate. So uh, this offering, that's the only time we generally take a special offering. Carl, I need some keys <laughs> and some ivories tickled there. Uh, anyway, uh, this goes to, to uh, restock our little blessing box out there. I think Norman Wanda, are you still doing that? Okay, so, uh, and heaven is the first one to contribute. All right. That's a little miracle walking there, too. Amen. She wasn't supposed to be able to talk or walk, and look what God's done in her life. Amen. So, Carl, play something softly and bring your offering to the blessing box. After me, I have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit is saying to me. I'll be attentive to the dealing of the Spirit. I'm learning that I am God's purpose in the earth. And I thank you, Lord, for a baptism of the Spirit 
within me. You may be seated. Thank you. One more thing, Mike. Go right ahead. Oh, Brother Richardson, quite a precious man in our congregation. I'll tell you a little bit about him, so maybe you'll be aware of other people that kind of fall in the category. He fell in when he came here. I wasn't here yet, but I've had a lot of conversations with him. And uh, he didn't exactly agree with a lot of our doctrines. He came from a different arrangement of worshiping the Lord, and he liked it. And when you do that, you kind of miss some of your things. You kind of want them to come along with you where you came from. And, uh, but that hasn't worked maybe the way he'd like for it. But he said what Linda said. The reason that he stayed here is because of the love. And the love has given him time to meld in amongst us. Right. And I just want to remind all of you, you don't have a clue what some of the people sitting beside you believe and might contradict you quite a bit. But love is such a melter. And that's what our nation was built on. Amen. That very same thing. So be aware of those around you. Yes. If they're staring off into the distance, they're meditating on some of the goofy stuff he comes up with. <laughs> Wonder oh how to handle that. <laughs> I can tell you every one of them that's been that way for you has been that way for him. He's come through the different things that God has shared with him. But he came through it with something you might not have come through with. Losing friends. That's tough. That is so tough. Especially when they've been lifelong friends. Yeah. But my progress is being made, isn't it? Amen. A lot. A lot of progress has been made. So just stay alert with those around you and, and pray for them if they don't understand the way you do or don't agree with you. You might actually discover they knew something you didn't. <laughs> it will make you grow. Amen. Amen. What matters most of all? You know, the Bible says if we have we can speak in tongues, have interpretations. We can prophesy, but if we don't love, it's like a bell without a clinker. <laughs> you know, all that doesn't matter. Uh, I have certain belief systems that I believe in, and, uh, and things that I believe in today I would have thought was terribly in heresy 20 years ago. But God's brought me along step at a time. Going to class? Okay. Kids going to class? Any little ones? Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> he's brought us along, and it, it's been a, quite a journey. I have lost a lot of friends over it, and I've gained the friends. And uh, seeing my mechanic buddies here, uh, that's, that's encouraging. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I want to share with you a thought about Adam's garden in, in Eden versus your garden. See, all through the, the Bible, there's, we are... God has looked at the, the whole scheme of things, the humanity. He's called us an army. In other places, we're known as a bride, and he's our husband. Remember, you're only a bride for a day. Then you're a wife. And he's called us an army. He's called us a garden. He's called us uh, a city. All those things. So <clears throat> I want to read the scriptures and look at it from a spiritual perspective and not just a Bible story that you tell your kids before they go to bed. I, I believe it ought to work today on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. I, I look at these things and how do I appropriate them in my life today or tomorrow or when I have challenges on Wednesday how do I appropriate what, what the Bible says in Genesis? So let's look at some of those things. I'm going to start with Genesis chapter 2. 
verse 8, it says, And the Lord God planted a garden east in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then something else happened. Out of Eden, there went a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is, that it is which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of the land is good. There is Delam and onyx stones there. Verse 13 says, And the name of the second river is Gihon. The, the same it is that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. Verse 14, And the name of the, the third river is Hedekiah. That is which goes down toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Everything we read in the Old Testament is a revelation of God. How God operates in the earth. All these are types and signs and symbols and shadows of, of something God does in the New Testament in a people. So with that in mind, I want to read to you Luke 24... Uh, verse 27, Luke's Gospel in the New Testament, just to set the stage here. And I'm not going to preach long because i got to be able to nursing home pretty quickly. <laughs> so I'm, hopefully I'm not boring you. Uh, Luke 24. Let me tell you that, the, have you got that on? Yeah. <clears throat> tell you the background of this. Jesus, this happened, this happened on the very day of the resurrection. Two guys headed down to Emmaus, and they were talking, talking, and they're very sad because they were followers of Jesus. And here they think Jesus came to uh, set up a kingdom and overthrow the Roman Empire that had so mistreated the Israelites. And they were sad because their, their guy that they, their hero was killed, was crucified. And they meet Jesus, not knowing that he's resurrected, and they're so sad. And Jesus says, what are you? He meets them, and he says, hey, fellas, what are you sad about? Oh, haven't you heard about what happened in Jerusalem? Haven't you heard? And they begin to relate the story of Jesus being crucified. Now, they didn't realize they're talking to Jesus. And so uh, Jesus went along talking to them, and, and here's what he did. In verse 27, and beginning at where? Moses. All right, help me out. What's Moses writing? Help me out loud. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the writings of Moses. He said, beginning at Moses' writings and all the, what else? The prophets. He expounded unto these two guys in all these scriptures a thing concerning who? So if you're reading the Old Testament and you can't see Jesus in there, you're missing the whole thing. It's a type of Jesus. It's, it's a type of how Jesus functioned. Now, to save time, we'll jump over to verse 44. Same day, he, Jesus, later in the day, he enters in this room and, uh, and he, there's his disciples there. And then he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in where? The Law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms, he said concerning me himself. Then opened he their understanding, and they understood the scriptures. Thank you. Now we'll go back to Genesis chapter 3, and I'll read one verse there. Genesis chapter 3. Have you all noticed I'm reading? i tell you what. My eyesight got so bad, it really kind of got scary. Linda says, I can't believe you're still driving. <laughs> I, I could I'd watch that frost line on the right, and I'd just stay right there, and I'd see a, a sign where there's working on the road, but I couldn't see what it said until I got right there. I mean, I'm almost past it. 
I told Linda, I said, man, I can see that sign way down there. I couldn't tell a red light from a green light. I just followed the traffic, and when they took off, I knew it turned green. <laughs> it's pretty bad. And I really, really was concerned about that. And uh, I just thank the Lord every day for 2020 vision, and that hasn't arrived yet, but I'm way better. I can read this. I was home studying. I'd hold a magnifying glass up there, and I'd try to find it, and my magnifying glass like that, and I'm trying to find where I'm at, and I'd go to the computer, and I'd hit the home button. I'd stick my magnifying glass up there, see where I put the cursor, and Larry says, call it a blesser. <laughs> you know, I'd stick it up there, and it was very difficult to prepare for Sunday morning when I had to do that. It's such a pleasure to be able to read. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 says, And they heard, now this after Eve comes along, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife Eve hid, them, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. God dwelled in the garden. He was there. And he dwells in our garden. Let's look at this today and for a short time. Goodness, I've got to hurry. <laughs> for a short time, let's look at it. I'm the garden of God. I hope people are picking fruit from your garden that's, that's tasteful, that's not rotten. I trust people are picking things from the words you say that encourage them, that strengthens them. You know, it's got to start at home. If I, if I come in to the house of a night and I say something hateful to Linda, it's hard for her to fix a good supper. <laughs> I need to compliment her. Amen. <laughs> we need to compliment each other. And it feels so good when after a long day's work, she'll compliment me. And it just makes me bust my buttons. I want to do more for her. That's the way it works. It's got to start at home. And then we can go from there. And hopefully, she can pick from my garden, I can pick from her, from our attitudes, from words that we say, words that, that compliment, words that, that uh, build your faith. When she was, she never said, I'm sick or nothing like that this morning. She was over there just quoting scriptures at the table really loud and <laughs> I, hadn't, I hadn't heard her do that in a while. And I, I walked over there, and I didn't say, are you sick? I just walked up behind her and put my hands on her and began to pray for her. And she didn't say anything about it, but I'm sure it encouraged her. I'm sure it encouraged her. And then I went back and was reading more scriptures, but love covers everything. Your doctrine can be wrong and still love folks, and we can get over that other stuff. But you may have a solid doctrine and be hateful. Your doctrine ain't worth a flip. Amen. You're the garden of God in the earth. Jesse, you're the garden of God where you're at. I know you all have a garden, but you're the garden at your house. Your husband back there in the sound booth, he's a garden. And you can pick from each other and help each other and strengthen one another and then go on from there. So God dwells in your garden just as he did in Adam's and Eve's garden. So do we listen to his voice as he moves in us or do we go hide? When the voice of God spoke to, to Adam and said, where art thou? It ain't like God didn't know. He knew where they were at. But when he said, where are you? Could he have been saying, where are you in the spirit? Have you disobeyed me or have you honored what I said? Did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and I told you not to? Where are you in the spirit? In Adam's garden, there was a lot of trees, but there was two main trees. One of them was a tree of life and the other was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So every word that you speak starting with your spouse 
and your children, your whoever. Every word you speak comes from a source from whatever you fed on. When Carla had the foster boy Jr., I told him I, he had he would have a chal- he would chal- be challenged on something and he would do the wrong thing. He'd spew on them and he'd say hurtful things and and I said, Jr., you you're feeding on the wrong stuff. When you have a challenge, you take that stuff in. It's just like a woman getting pregnant. There's going to be a time she's going to give birth to that baby. You take in words, you take in things, thoughts, hurtful things, and it might be three days later you'll give birth to it. It may not always work nine months later, but you get hurt from something they say and you spout off something hateful. You spray out something hateful. That's, uh, you say, well, I didn't even say that. Well, you took it in somewhere back here. You might have got hurt from something they said three days ago. Now you just now gave birth to it. Eradicate that. Abort that. <coughs> to start taking in things. Listen, watch the music you listen to. Watch the things you see, the things you hear. Take in, let all of your, your five senses, let you, them be gates to your spirit of good stuff. Your words are either life-giving or life-taking. Think about a trip in a car. You, get, you speak words of life to your spouse. Let's just say to your spouse, man, you're going real good. And then the next day you speak words of hate. Oh, you're going backwards now. Now you speak words of life. You're not going to get very far on that trip. Backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. Keep speaking life. Keep speaking words that edify. Keep speaking words. Keep eating off the tree of knowledge. Well, you don't know what they did. You know, that's probably true. They probably did say hurtful things. Just don't say it back. How's that? Let your garden produce Good stuff. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 6, It is a spirit that quickeneth. Quickeneth means comes alive. When you tear your fingernail off till it bleeds, what do you call that? Into the what? Quick. That's an old English term meaning alive. Jesus said the words that I speak, it's the spirit that quickeneth. The, pro, the, the, uh, the flesh don't profit anything, but the words that I speak, they're spirit and life. Understand when you speak life, you speak life-giving things. The spirit's in that, and it will quicken. It'll make it grow. It's not your job to make it grow. It's just your job to plant it. Plant those seeds of life. When you speak life, the spirit always quickens it. When you speak death words, the flesh doesn't profit anything because dying starts to work. You don't want death and lying, dying all, uh, all working together. Then it said, out of the river, out of the Eden, as you all already know, I'm not very artistic. <laughs> Let's just say, this is Eden. That's Adam's garden. But right now, for the sake of you, that's you. Let's try another one. Linda, you have to help me with spelling here, so go to Genesis chapter 2. Out of this garden flowed four rivers. We've got one flowing here. It's P. I S O N. I don't mean a hill of beans to me till I learn what those things mean. Now, uh, let's first of all, let's go to John chapter 7. Did you get my second note, Norm? Okay. John chapter 7, verse 38 says, He that believeth on me, as the Spirit has said, out of his belly, or innermost being, shall flow what? Rivers of living water. And then the next verse says, But this spake he of the what? All right. 
out of your belly, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers. In other words, what you say is come from, from down deep. You've been hurt. You've been, uh, some kids, Carlos, have been molested. So all they know is all this hurt and drama. And it's hard to get that out. Somebody has to talk and train them, and, and it, it, don't, it don't happen like that. Have you noticed that? It takes a while. It takes seed time to harvest is quite a while. We used to plant a lot of corn in our garden because we had a big garden. And, you know, we planted the corn, and Mom didn't look out the kitchen window and said, That corn ain't up yet. So dig it up. Let's plant it again. We planted it again. No, we didn't, but I mean, I'm just hypothetical. So if we planted it again, it still ain't up the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and pretty soon a little green twig starts coming up. But we had hope and belief that it would do that when we planted it, or we wouldn't have planted it. We still didn't have any corn on the cob yet. We were patient to wait for it. So when you plant a seed of, of life giving words, words are like a seed. But as you plant words and you speak things, you are the garden. And out of you comes a river. Psalms 46 says, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of our God. All of humanity God owns. Good, the bad, the ugly. All of them. So that's the city of God. The old scripture says, uh, your city set on a hill. Uh, you, you know, there's a lot of people ain't got the lights on yet. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm seeing that in a nice way. We're, we're not being lit up by the Spirit yet, but they still make up the city of God. It says, there's the river, the streams where I'll make glad the city of God. So the first river is Pison. It means dispersive. What are you dispersing? What, what are you, uh, when you get up for morning to your spouse, what, what's the first thing you say? You say good words, bad words, hateful words, life-giving words. What, what do you, what's the seed you planted that day? It means dispersive. And the Bible says that the stream ran into the land of Spell it, Linda. H-A-V-I. Havilah. I guess that's the way you say it. Okay. Well, that don't mean nothing either until I learned what it meant. Havilah means to twist, to twirl, to dance, to praise. Wow. Out of my garden... Out of my innermost being shall flow the Bible. We just read it. It flows rivers of living water. Does it flow to, to, till people want to just dance and praise God? Hallelujah. I feel better today. Hmm. Then there was another river. The second river was Gihon. That didn't mean much to me either until I looked it up. Well, Gihon really never had a, a definition. I went to Strong's Concordance, no definition. I went to a dictionary, it didn't have a definition. But it says here, uh, and the gold of the land is good. There's dellum and onyx stone. And the same of the second river is Gihon. The same it is, it is that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. So that land... Now that river flowed down here to, help me out, Linda, E-T-H-I-O-P-I-A, Ethiopia. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Do you know that means blackness? Now, those old scriptures that don't mean diddly squat, when we understand what, what it all means, it kind of has a... a, a Gives us some understanding. If I'm the garden now, we're not, you know, we're not talking about eating so much as we're the garden of God. What's flowing out of us? Sometimes it flows over here to Havilah where there's just joy and peace and, and wonderful stuff happening. Just makes people want to dance and, and be happy. 
Well, sometimes it goes to blackness. Now, I could say, I'm going to go to a bar. Do uh, you ever notice most bars are dark? You never see lots of lights in a bar. I've been there. I go to Frog Pond once in a while, take people to eat over there, and uh, I don't try to change the whole bar. I talk to the people that I'm talking to, and I just share with them. Sometimes God don't even come up. Gary, I just want to be their friend. Just want to be their buddy. I, I'm not trying to... Let me see how I say it. I just want my, my spirit to be kind and my spirit to be loving enough. And I talked to a guy over there, sat and eat with him a while back, good while back. We didn't talk about God, but while we we're talking, tears are streaming down his face. We weren't talking about hateful things, just being his friend. But there was a dark spot. Now, when I don't plan on it, I, I, I intentionally call this guy for dinner over there. When I don't intentionally do that, but I'm talking to people in darkness where the Spirit of God's concerned and I just flow freely, that's when the Spirit can do the best work when you don't know it. You know, when you, you plan on it, that's good and that's wonderful. But when you just freely share the love of God to people who are, they feel so dark and shut in and feel like uh, nothing's working for me. They're in a dark spot in their life. And you can just share good things and goodness. And you don't even know you helped them. That blesses God. We're not trying to see how many notches we can put on our gun or on our staff. How many people we want the Lord. I'm not into that. That Some people do that, and that's fine. If they're called to do that, hallelujah, knock yourself out. But you know what? I just like to be. Just like to be. Some of you fish. Some of you golf. Some of you bowl. Some of you do other things. I drive truck. <laughs> and says, you don't do no fun stuff. <laughs> You know, my fun stuff is, is visiting. I enjoy visiting. Nick was over doing some stuff in my truck the other day, and I just enjoyed visiting. We got tired of the truck, went and sat down in the shop, and just sat and looked at each other and <laughs> visited. That's my joy. I enjoy just visiting and, and loving people. And that's, that's where I'm at. You may do other things to, to create your, your, your garden and what's flowing out of you is so important let's read some more here and the name of the third river is you have to spell that one Linda H-I-D-D E-K-E-L head of kale I guess you can name it what you want to and that flows to Assyria. That didn't mean nothing to me either until I looked it up. When I looked it up, some of these Old Testament things starts coming alive in me. And I got it in my notes here, I wrote it down, what it means. It means rapid. Hedekiah means rapid. It flows rapidly to Assyria. And Assyria means success. Isn't that something? That kind of got my attention. <laughs> you know what? I've been poor so long. <laughs> that success looked pretty good to me. But you know, I began to realize there's more success than just money. Money is a part. But there's a time that the what river flows out of here ought to minister to those mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. 
We had a giving service one time when I pastored in southern Missouri, and Larry was coming to church there. And he, I don't even know if he knows this story or not. But there was a family there. We had this giving service. Every once in a while, every six, eight months, we'd, uh, if kind of the money kind of went, we got, went through a famine financially in the church, we'd just have a giving service. So everybody just brings something and give it to somebody else. Man, we was, was giving away stainless steel pots and pans, and and uh, sometimes some may give a car, and uh, others would give something else. Some may give money. Well, Larry gave all he had to a family. He had no idea that family was the richest family in the county. And they told me later they didn't know Larry. It's that guy, and he pointed out what he'd done. He said he gave us this much money. We didn't need it at all. The guy broke down bawling. He says, it did something for me. It broke something in me that nothing else would have done. A sermon wouldn't have done it. But that did something for me. So you don't know. Larry didn't know that they, they, they had more money than Larry would ever have in a lifetime. But he gave to them. See, sometimes it's just what you do ministers to people. Just ministers to people. So, as a river flows out of you, it'll bring success. It might be mentally for somebody. It might be uh, physically for somebody else. Hopefully our river today, as we, we uh, became a lake even to, to people we prayed for that weren't even here. But that river, it says it rushed to bring success. And then the fourth river was Euphrates. Spell it, Linda. E-U-P-H-R-A-T-E-S. That's the longest river today even in Southeast Asia. It's eight, about 1,800 miles long. It's the longest and biggest river. <coughs> uh, but Euphrates means breaking forth, rushing. Man, think about it. I just ask myself, Lord, if I'm the garden today, I think the Garden of Eden should be like in Iraq, somewhere like that, if you went back to when it happened. Is this stuff coming out of me? Am I, is my river going over here and blessing these people? Is my river blessing the people that's in darkness and they're shut in and they feel like nobody loves me and nobody cares is my river or do I say well you know I felt like that one time myself well, that don't help nobody I might have <laughs> you know for that matter but I've learned some things I haven't learned it all what I don't know makes a bigger book than what I know but I've learned if this river flows out of me it'll flow to people that's hurting and shut up in darkness and feel like they're all alone Help me, Lord, just to, to my river to wake them up and say, they are somebody. I don't care how poor somebody is, they are somebody. God gave his life for them, and I'll tell you, they are somebody. It may wake other people up mentally or spirit, physically or financially, but this long river, Euphrates, which means a breaking forth, a a rushing, it's, it's, it's far, far reaching. In conclusion, I want to tell you a little story. I heard this just last week. This woman is telling a story. She must have been 75 years old. I'm just guessing. She, she looked older than me. <laughs> oh, goodness, help me, Lord. <laughs> and she said, when I was 11... Now, this is an old lady telling a story. She says, when I was 11 years old, my mother was a praying woman. She led the worship at church. And she said she'd come out of the bedroom one morning, said she'd been crying and praying so long her eyes had almost swell shut. And she told this 11-year-old girl, she said, God just spoke to me. And she said, he did? He said, I'd sang to, to thousands of people. She said our church was a small little church. Mom led the, the, the singing and worship there. And uh, 
she said, uh, and I'm just adding this, you see, as individuals, we are the garden of God, right? As the river flows out of us, it can take on many, many paths, many streams. We just first got to realize we're a river of praise. Number two, we got to realize that we got to be prepared to minister to those in darkness. And don't let the darkness suck you in. We got to also remember that our river can make somebody successful that th thought they could never make it. But we got this long river here that's rushing. Help us, Lord, just to be a rushing river. Well, this woman said, Mom, come out of the bedroom. Eyes almost swell shut. It said, uh, God just spoke to me. I'd sing the thousands. She said, she never did. So we don't run about 20 at church. Mom led the, the singing, and she said, Mom was dying. She said she's in her 90s. On her deathbed, her voice was so weak, she could hardly speak above a whisper. And she said, this lady said, I was standing on one side of her bed, and my sister was standing on the other side. And mom said, I think I want to sing. Her voice was so faint. And said she started singing like she had a voice of a teenager. And she said, I just got my phone and... I, I recorded it. She said, I posted it on Facebook. She said, the next day my husband said to me, she said, do you know there's 900 views on that thing? went viral. She said, the last, she said, as she sang those three songs, she just closed her eyes, went to her heavenly home. She said, the last uh, account we had, it had 7 million views. When God said she would sing the thousands, he will perform it. He'll cause it to happen. And God speaks things to you. Remember, God hasn't left you. He hasn't forgotten you. People speak into your lives. Take it to the bank. Just take it to the bank. God knows when he speaks. We had words of wisdom and words of knowledge come forth this morning as part of the gifts of the Spirit. As people ministering to take that to the bank. It's as if God spoke to you. The people speaks to you. I have flaws in my life. Ask Linda. She probably don't tell me enough <laughs> as much, but when she makes those eyes big at me, I know, I know I've had to lick bad. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, know, I know supper might be cornflakes, but <laughs> no, I was kidding you. <laughs> We've never had that. But <laughs> anyway, it's so important to speak words of life. What's, flow, what's, what's in your garden? What's flowing out of your garden? Eden's millennium's behind us. We're the garden of God now. What's flowing out of us? Is what's flowing out of us, is it ministering to, to different people, different groups of people? Is your garden... You remember what you eat, what you take in is what you give out. Are you taking in, are you eating off the tree of life? Or are you all tree, all eating off the tree of God, knowledge of good and evil? If you're eating off the tree of good and evil, you see evil in some, you see good in some. Forget that. As long as there's people, there's going to be bad stuff happen. See the good. You know, sometimes... I know that I heard this story about an old hateful man. He was just hateful to everybody. But he was abused when he was a child. He'd been divorced. Everything around his makeup was bad. And that's all he took in. That same guy could have took in, eat off the tree of life and started giving off good stuff. Good stuff. Somewhere or another, you got to Draw a line to saying, I start here. I talked to a guy in Tennessee 
loved the guy and knew him well. He said, Mike, the Lord delivered me like that from drugs. He delivered me like that from alcohol. He delivered me like that from this. He said, but I cussed so many years. <laughs> he said, it took me a while to quit cussing. You know, some people get around that and say, oh, he didn't get nothing. Oh, yes, he did. Sometimes it just takes time. Let's be patient with those who takes time. What's flowing out of your garden? Is your river contaminated? Is your river flowing to people that's making them sick and dying? Or is your river fresh? Is your river a good, clear stream that, that flows to God? Are people being refreshed from what you have to say? Or are they being condemned and no good and can't make it attitude? Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord Jesus, every one of us, to have a river that's fresh and clean and pure. That everyone we talk to, everyone we share with, will bring them strength. It'll give them clarity of mind. Those in darkness and feel like they're just shut up Nobody cares. Help us to say things, Lord, that will give them a ray of light to see I can make something of myself. I am important to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your, your word today. Amen. Let there be to tell you something about that old lady her river flowed so far I believe she said there's seven million nine hundred thousand views they got comments from almost every nation in the world in languages they couldn't even read but they had to go on translation and show it so you never know there in her 90s on her deathbed she's far-reaching every nation in the country, in the world. God is so good. Amen. Thank you for listening today. Thank you for your attention. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hannah, thank you for bringing your family. Amen. And uh, Gary, we missed you when you wasn't here last week. Amen. And Kay, thanks for bringing your family, part of your family. Amen. Is this Angie? Okay. I haven't seen you girls since you were little, so I, I hardly know which one's Katie and which one's Angie. And which <laughs> Anyway, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.